feel like I'm having a meltdown. <laughs> Last night was rough. I just wanted to go home. I was like, why did we do this? What are we doing here? <laughs> I woke up at like 3 a.m. and I, I couldn't fall asleep the rest of the night. I was just so stressed about everything. It just, it feels that overwhelming, which I don't know, it, it probably shouldn't, but um, yeah, last night and this morning, I just felt like I was just kind of like pa panicked. Uh, like, what have I done? What are we doing here? What, what, why am I doing this? This is so stupid. <laughs> Uh, I just, I want to have fun and just feel like this is an adventure, but it's, this is like... <sighs> that was me on the morning of my first day at a job that was literally a dream come true. Sometimes when you get an opportunity you always wanted, it is terrifying because what if you fail or what if it's just hard or you're bad at it? This is Ardman. It's a stop motion animation studio. They made the movie Chicken Run more than 20 years ago. And when I sat in a little movie theater, stuffing my face with popcorn, watching Chicken Run, I knew that someday I wanted to work on a movie just like it. I eventually did become an animator and worked on several movies. Then in 2022, I was given the chance to work for a few months on the sequel to Chicken Run. A chance to go live in England for a while, visit Europe, and work on the sequel to a movie that had been so inspirational for me. It's literally like a dream come true. I thought of it as a call to adventure, and I said yes. I'm looking for someone to share in an adventure. Do you remember Lord of the Rings? Frodo is literally having the adventure of his life. He said yes to the call to adventure, which is exciting at first. But then there's that moment in the middle when Frodo just wants to go home because the adventure is hard and scary. I wish none of this had happened. But watching his adventure, we know in the end it's worth it if he succeeds. And okay, look, it's not like I'm carrying the one ring to Mount Doom here. I'm just starting a gig at an animation studio. It's just the first day at a new job. But when you move your whole family to a new country, you're in temporary housing, it's Christmas time, you're trying to find a house to rent, you need a car, a new phone, figure out how foreign banks work. There are one million tiny differences in this new country that you just suddenly feel like an alien. And you think, I kind of want to just be back home. But there you are, so you walk through the door. Do you remember Gandalf? If you're starting an adventure, it really helps to have a Gandalf or a couple Gandalfs to guide you and a, a Samwise Gamgee. You need people to help you along the way. This is my buddy, Adam. He and his family were super welcoming. He had us over for dinner. He gave me his tips and advice for working with Ardman's Clay. And this is Tim. He's another animator. As soon as I walked in the studio, Tim introduced himself to me. He could have just said, hi, welcome. But instead, he walked me all around the studio, helped me get oriented. He sympathized with how overwhelming it felt to be in a different country at a new studio and just trying to find your way around. So Tim became an instant friend and helped put me at ease. This is Ian and Lloyd, my animation supervisors, a couple of good Gandalfs. Same with them. They showed me the ropes, were encouraging, gave me lots of tips, advice. But this animation style was completely different than most of what I had done before. It was snappier and cartoonier, and I had never animated with clay faces like this before. But I had my Gandalfs and my Sam Gamgees to help ease my brain. And when I chilled out a little bit, it was just cool walking around Ardman and seeing all the props and characters on display everywhere from all their past projects. It's just, it's like a dream being here. One thing about me, my sense of direction is the worst. It is so bad, it takes me forever to get oriented in a new place like this. Especially somewhere that's like a huge maze to begin with. I get lost. Thankfully, they have maps around the studio like this. But for me, I might as well be looking at hieroglyphics. So my strategy is just to pretend like I know where I'm going and wander around like an idiot until I find something that looks familiar. I usually find a few dead ends and end up walking in circles, but eventually I find my way. But I'm consoled by the fact that even Frodo on his adventure got lost sometimes. This looks strangely familiar. Because we've been here before. We're going in circles. So I just tell myself that getting lost is part of the adventure. 
But at this point, I still wasn't sure how well I was going to do uh, with this animation style, working with clay like this. So they had me start practicing doing some test animation with Rocky, just to get used to the mouths and the clay. And they knew I hadn't worked with clay before, uh, and so they were really helpful with that. So this is my first test shot with Rocky, just getting used to the mouths and the clay. Uh, and they liked the shot, so that was a relief, and it helped boost the confidence a bit. What are you doing here? After practicing and testing for a while, I had to get ready for my first real shot, my, my first shot that would end up in the movie. This is me doing a rough rehearsal shot. I'm still in a test unit here working out some posing and blocking the movement. This is a shot where Rocky and Ginger are lifting Molly up, so I had to work out how the characters would be posed and holding on to each other. It's always complicated when stop motion puppets are holding on to each other because when you move one character, it tends to you know move the other one too, and it's just tricky to, to animate. Uh, I felt like this shot was was a pretty key moment in the sequence, in the story, and they asked me to do it. And, and the fact that it's my first real shot in the film, so, you know, no pressure. The way that it works, shooting a shot in general, after meeting with the director initially and talking over the shot, you get set up in your unit and you rehearse it or block it. Rehearsals are just quick and rough, like this. It's a rough practice run to figure out your timing and your poses and, and to show the director like what, you, what, what you're going to do. And then you meet with the director again. You talk about your rehearsal and any changes that need to be made. And then you go animate it for real. It's nice once you get launched on a shot, you get to just settle into your unit. All the preparation is done and that unit becomes your home for a week or two or, or longer, depending on how many shots you have there. And then you get into a zone and you spend all day, each day, shooting a couple seconds of animation. But at the end of the day, those two seconds, it actually feels like a lot. And you've usually poured your heart and soul into every frame of those two seconds. For the mouths, you have a whole face kit with all the different shapes and you swap the mouths over and over during dialogue. And since they're clay, you can adjust the shapes a little bit if you need to. But speaking of preparation, before you shoot the real shot, it's critical that you make sure your puppet's armature is tensioned correctly, that each joint is as tight or loose as you want it to be for that specific shot. Sometimes you might want the knees tighter or looser, for example, and there's a whole team of people in the puppets department that can help you get your puppets primed, tensioned, looking good, and ready to animate. And sometimes when you start animating, even though you've rehearsed the shot beforehand, things can change or you might have a new idea. So I'm doing something on this shot that um, I don't really talk about with the director, but I feel like this is such an important shot. You know, like this, you have all the, the chaos of, of all this like action happening. And then you've got Molly hanging perilously for her life. And then this is the shot where they, she's safely back up on the ground. And um, it's like the, whew, we're okay. Here's how it's going so far. <coughs> Okay, now, uh, one thing that was in, if you watch the, uh, the block, if you look at the, the hands right here, you know, thinking as a, as, a, as a parent, you just saved your child from death. Uh, you just want, would want to, like, touch them and hold them, and you, you know what I mean? I was thinking about the instincts of, of her wanting to just kind of maintain that physical contact, you know? Um, so I kind of have to say that the idea is kind of there in the... In, the, in, in this block where the hands kind of almost kind of come together for a second and um but here in the actual thought shot i've decided you know what i'm just gonna go for it i'm just gonna have this little this little moment where they just kind of hold hands for just a second you know mother just i just want that little moment with the hands see so yeah, it's not something we talked about exactly uh hopefully they like it i just feel like as a parent, that's what I would do. Now that said, generally you should, like, if you're going to do anything different from what you've blocked or rehearsed, you should probably get the director to buy off on the idea before you just do it. But in this case, I felt like the, um, the moment was kind of there in the block, you know, where the hands were kind of almost touching. I'm just going a little further with it here in the actual shot of, like, actually having their hands, like, make contact. Um, so I think it'll be all right. Anyway, it's been very, it's been such a slow shot uh, to do. I'm like, I've been working at it for like, I think this is day three and I'm on like frame 57, which is kind of crazy, but yeah, I'm happy with it so far. 
So I think that moment uh, is subtle. It's something that, I don't know, it's a detail that could easily be missed. But for me, as a parent, thinking about my own kids, just that you know physical touch of having those hands connect uh, was really important to me. When characters are running, rigs like this are really helpful for holding your puppets up in the air when both feet are off the ground. And then those rigs will get painted out in post-production. And once you've finished a shot, you let the production team know and it gets sent off to the editors, the director reviews it, and hopefully they like it and approve it. If they don't approve it, you're going to have to either do it again or cut back partway and do part of it over again. So you wait and eventually someone calls you and lets you know whether it was approved and then you go meet with the director again. And then you get to see your shot in context, in the cut, see how it plays with the two shots that surround it. And then you get briefed for your next shot. And it's always really nice when the director reacts well to what you've done. This was my first real shot in the movie. Uh, And at this point, I was still tending toward a bit of a naturalistic style from the previous movies that I had worked on. Uh, And it was good. It got approved. But I, I ended up being really frustrated about the end of the shot. The shot was good. I, I was still just, I, I, I was a little bugged at kind of how the, how the running off felt. And um, I don't know, every animator is probably like this where they just, they, they know their shots so well and the little thing just bug them and they just know how it could have been different. It's just this a few seconds long where you put so much effort into it. Like I was so happy with the shot up to, you know, like, like 75% done I got into that run and it was like I'm not I mean if you're good at animating like you can make your way through something but I wasn't a master at running chickens <laughs> and I I wish I came out of that shot feeling like I'm the master of running chickens but uh that's that's not what happened I, I made my way through it and I just the frustrating part is that you can't do it over again it just, it has to live as it is and be good enough. I guess life is kind of that way. There's no way you can live a perfect life. You're going to be going along thinking, I'm doing great, and then you're going to mess up. Anyway, really, it's just kind of like lighting a fire in me and making me like, ah, I want to do better because I'm probably, I, I don't even know if I'm going to get to do any other running on the movie. I, I don't really want to because I don't like making puppets run, but like the fact that I just kind of uh, didn't feel like I was the boss of this animation and knew exactly what I was doing. It, just, it makes me want to do it again so that I can feel like I conquered it. I mean, it looked fu- it looked good in the cut. Sam liked it, said it was good. I don't know. <laughs> they didn't say anything about the, the little hand-holdy thing. I feel like you're, as you watch the shot, your eye just doesn't go there. So, I don't know. I'm still glad that I put that moment in of the hands, like, touching. But nobody commented on it. And I think as you watch it, you just, like, you just don't notice it but it's a little detail that's there that i know it's there and i'm glad it's there okay that's what's on my mind right now i think what really helps is to look at each shot as part of an overall artistic journey try your best on each one accept the fact that things probably won't be 100 percent perfect and just be okay with that and then look at what little things you can improve the next time aim for excellence but sometimes good enough is good enough To back up to the beginning, when I first showed up at Aardman, I was intimidated about working with the clay faces. I was scared I might not do as well as I had hoped or might just be difficult and hard. So what helped? What helped me was just moving forward anyway. Having my Gandalfs and Sam Gamgees helped a lot. And it really helped to just focus on one day at a time and one shot at a time. It can be overwhelming to think about having to do a whole list of shots or a whole scene. It can seem big and daunting, but if you just ignore that and you just focus on the one thing in front of you, that makes a big difference for me. What's your next shot? You focus only on that one shot, only on those four or five seconds of performance. You don't think about all the other shots waiting for you. You just focus on the one thing in front of you and let yourself get into that moment. And when that moment is done, you chill out, take a break, and then focus on the next thing. The more I animated, the more comfortable I got with Ardman's unique style. I was really inspired by the shots that all the other animators did. I didn't have enough time at the studio to reach the level of some of the other animators who had been there for a long time. They're amazing. But I did something that I had dreamed of, even though it was intimidating to me in some ways. After four months at Ardman, it was weird that it was suddenly over. I had a nice handful of shots I got to do, and I ended up being happy with my work. It was fun. I ended up loving working with the clay, and it made me want to do more with clay in the future. 
I still think it's crazy thinking back to the year 2000. I was young, seeing Chicken Run in a tiny movie theater, watching the credits roll by and wishfully saying, someday my name's going to be in the credits of a movie like that. Just hoping. And that 20 years later, I got to literally work on a movie just like that. Uh, Just really cool. And after four months in England, I found that I was comfortable living in another part of the world. I learned to handle driving on the backwards roads, and it made me feel, you know, strengthened and more capable as a person. And now, if I ever went back or moved to another part of the world, I would feel much more confident in what I was doing. For me, it made the world feel like a smaller place in a good way. Going back to Lord of the Rings again. My little adventure here was very small compared to that. I wasn't on a mission to save the world, but it makes me think of something important. It's something that I love about how difficult stop motion animation can be. You can feel like you're succeeding 90% of the way, but then you end up feeling like you messed it up or it just wasn't perfect. You wanted perfection. It was good enough, but not what you were trying to do. When Frodo got all the way to Mount Doom, and I'm going to spoil Lord of the Rings here, so if you don't want to spoil, just skip ahead 30 seconds. When he gets to the end, he's right at the finish line and he kind of fumbles. And when I first saw that happen, it was heartbreaking to me. But then one of my closest friends reminded me Frodo's job was to get it there. And it worked out. What he did was difficult, but it was good enough to get the job done. And in life, you can strive for perfection, but you won't achieve it in some things. But instead of focusing only on the one mistake, you also have to focus on the 99 other things you got right. My animation at Ardman was not perfect. I could point out the flaws in probably every shot that I did but maybe the average person couldn't. I got the job done, and sometimes it was great, and sometimes it was good enough. And that's what I love about stop motion anyway. It just won't be perfect most of the time, but you try really hard. And there's just something so human to me about being willing to try really hard, knowing that you'll make mistakes, and it might not be perfect. And if you make yourself step back and see the whole big picture in context, a lot of those little so-called mistakes just kind of go by quickly, or they disappear, and become part of the charm. 